This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. First at 5, the rain is moving out and some sunshine is moving in. You can see some pretty clear skies on our RTV6 tower camera atop the city's tallest building. We begin with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory tonight. So, Kevin, what can we expect now? Blue sky is good, right? Yeah, you can see it looks great. The showers, thunderstorms moving out does mean that we've got a dry stretch coming our way. So, not just tonight that will be beautiful, but the next several days. There go the thunderstorms. They're over Cincinnati and Kentucky and headed to the east, away from central Indiana. We're almost to the point where we can count clouds. What we see out our windows now will disappear tonight. The sky will go mostly clear. We'll have a nice little breeze out of the west, and the cooler, drier air will work its way in. 81 in Muncie. Current temperatures are warmest in Indianapolis, also in the low 80s. Between now and 10 o'clock, clouds gradually clear. You've got your west wind and a clear sky. Temperature by 71 at 10. As we look at tomorrow, refreshing start, 60 at 8 a.m. In Indy, a noontime temperature of 73, and your afternoon high temperature with sunshine at 77. Were you disappointed when it went away? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was very sad. Recycling returns to Johnson County after getting rid of the service last year. As RTV 6's Stephanie Wade reports tonight, the recycling district could no longer afford sorting through items that were not, in fact, recyclable. She is working for you to find out what's going to be different now. After closing seven recycling centers last year, the county has opened this new recycling service center, and you don't even have to get out of your vehicle. I think it's great. It's very convenient, and it's worked out great for me. It's a brand new system in Johnson County after taking a year-long hiatus from offering recycling services. The Johnson County Recycling District tells me it just got too expensive to sort through all the trash people were dumping in the recycling bins. You know, we had very few people really were malicious and just brought their trash. I mean, it happened, sure. Uh, but it was more that a lot of the material that would end up in the bin were things that just really couldn't be recycled. Now they've gotten rid of that system and created this drive through site where drivers remain in their cars and staff remove the items for you. This way, staff members are able to correctly sort items and people can feel more responsible with their waste. Working for you in Franklin, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Thank you, Stephanie. And items they will take include cardboard, paper, plastic, bottles and jugs, glasses, aluminum and tin cans. The center will be open Thursdays through Fridays and two Saturdays per month. Tuesday through Friday, excuse me. And if you ever have a problem and need help getting answers, reach out to us at workingforyou at rtb6.com. Governor Eric Holcomb says he supports Andrew Luck's decision to step away from the NFL and retire from the Indianapolis Colts. Here's what he had to say. When you try to put yourself into his cleats, I guess you'd say, um, he made the right decision for him. As, as um, hard as it is for, for folks to uh, hear it, uh, that, that wanted to see him bring a Super Bowl ring back to Indianapolis, and I bet you he was one of them. Um, he made the right decision for him, and uh, I respect that and, and for, the, for his health and uh, the, the next chapter in his life. Uh, but I, I'm still going to be betting on the Colts. You better believe that. Since Luck announced his retirement on Saturday, it has thrust Jacoby Brissett into the limelight. Brissett is now the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, the team that has very big expectations even after Luck's retirement, which means the pressure will be on him to perform. Colts coach Frank Reich talks about what he's been telling Brissett ahead of the start of the regular season. I have a plan on every play. You know, have a plan on every play. Um, keep it simple. Um, you know, keep it simple and don't try to be a hero. You know, don't try to be a hero. Um, just play, play good football. You got good guys around you. I mean, that's really the message to any quarterback. Those are kind of core principles for any quarterback. The Colts play their final preseason game against the Bengals on Thursday night in Cincinnati. The starters won't play in this game. The regular season starts Sunday, September 8th. The Colts will be in L.A. to take on the Chargers. New at 5, the men's head basketball coach at IUPUI has resigned following his arrest on drunk driving charges in Hamilton County. IUPUI says the decision for Jason Gardner to step down was done by mutual agreement. Police arrested Gardner around 5 Monday morning in Fishers. He is charged with OWI 
according to records from the Hamilton County Jail. Gardner has coached IUPUI since 2014. He attended North Central High School and won the 1999 Indiana Mr. Basketball Award as the state's best high school boys basketball player. He later played college ball at the University of Arizona. There is no word yet on who will replace Gardner as coach of IUPUI. The opioid epidemic has ravaged Indiana, leaving Hoosiers across the state dead. And now we are learning Indiana may have received less money than it should have for opioid treatment. That's according to a new study. The Richard M. Fairbanks Foundation recently studied how much money each state received compared to how many opioid deaths it saw. In 2017 and 2018, the federal government allocated $11 billion across all 50 states. Indiana received about $159 million or $1.9 percent of funding, but the state had nearly 4% of all opioid related deaths in the country in 2017, according to the study. If the percentage of money allocated was equal to the percentage of opioid deaths suffered, Indiana should have received another $175 million. The other underfunded states were Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New Jersey. The overfunded states were California, Texas, and Washington. A Westside grocery store partially reopened today after being closed for several days because of a failed health inspection. According to the Marion County Health Department, the Safeway location in the 3000 block of Kessler Boulevard North Drive had its food license suspended on August 22nd. That happened after an inspection showed rodent droppings in several areas of the store and rodent urine on some shelves. The inspection also found other evidence of pest activity. The health department says the store passed inspection today for the general sales floor and the meat department, but the deli did not pass reinspection and will remain closed until further notice. The country's top diplomat was in Indianapolis to discuss some of the biggest global hotspots. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo addressed the 100th American Legion Convention in Indianapolis. The Indianapolis-based organization asked the secretary to share this insights on what's happening in Iran, Syria, and North Korea. Pompeo, who is an army veteran, says the administration welcomes a possible meeting with Iran if the country disavows building nuclear weapons and stops engaging in regional terrorism activities. RTV6's Rafael Sanchez sat down with the secretary to talk about issues on the minds of Hoosiers. He joins us now with more on his one-on-one -on -one interview. Rafael. Uh, Mark, good afternoon. We talked about the impact of the trade war on Hoosier farmers, a very tense Middle East, and Russian meddling in the 2020 elections. The secretary says the administration is working on safeguarding the voting process. We've already had one uh, even year election in 2018. We did good work uh, preventing that election from being impacted in 2018. We intend to do the same thing in 2020. Uh, it's true, uh, there are multiple nations, uh, frankly, some non-state actors, uh, terrorist groups that wanna mess around with American elections. Uh, our FBI, our Department of Homeland Security, the work that we do at the State Department is all aimed at ensuring that state and local election officials can run free and fair elections. So elections, a big issue here in the Hoosier state, but an even bigger issue, Mark and Amanda, is the trade war with China. What's on the minds of Hoosier farmers and what the secretary has to say about that? That's all coming up tonight on the news at six. Mark? We will see you then, Rafael. Thank you. New tonight, help for residents who have just a few more weeks to pack up and leave a southwest side mobile home park. The mayor's office and elected officials are holding a resource event one week from today at the I-70 mobile home park. Residents reached out to RTV last week saying they weren't given enough notice, answers, or resources. In some cases, residents need to move their actual homes, which they own, but do not own the land beneath them. The resource fair will provide information about housing assistance and legal services. Only RTV6 was there today when an attorney met with residents concerned about making their voices heard. You can see what they learned tonight on the news at 11. A trial date is now set for 36-year-old Ivory Smith. She is the Indianapolis woman charged with two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder in the shooting death of a three-month-old boy and his 37-year-old uncle over the weekend. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office filed the charges Monday and Smith appeared in court today. Her trial is set for November 18th. The Marion County Coroner says William Wilson Jr. and his infant nephew, Kador T. Wilson, were the victims of Saturday's shooting on Guilford Avenue. They were pronounced dead at the scene. Ivory Smith has been identified as William Wilson Jr.'s girlfriend. Still ahead at 5.30, a landmark decision that many say could be a turning point in the nation's fight against opioids. How a judge's ruling against drug maker Johnson & Johnson could be the beginning in the effort to get opioids off the streets. But first year at 5, do you recognize this man? Police need your help in finding him. 
what he's accused of after the break. Kevin. And a beautiful stretch of weather ahead. Temperature should be comfortable. There's your average high, 84. We'll get into details coming up. Or visit batteriesplus.com. Right now, police need your help to find a man who robbed a bank. The Lafayette Police Department released these surveillance images of a man who robbed the Regions Bank on Union Street in Lafayette yesterday afternoon. Investigators say the man gave the teller a note demanding money and he left the bank. Police didn't say how much money that he got away with. They also say he did not show a weapon. If you do recognize this man or have any information about the crime, call the Lafayette Police Department. Hiring Hoosiers is an RTV6 effort to make it easier for you to find the job you want or the education to help you get there. Students are becoming problem solvers so they can excel in the manufacturing industry. Through the Advanced Manufacturing Technology Program, students at J. Everett Light Career Center near North Central High School use tools like 3D printing, laser printing, and CNC machining. Quality control, maintenance awareness, and safety are also aspects of this course. Instructors say the skills they are learning will help them grow in manufacturing, production, and engineering. Really everything we do these days is manipulated in some way by a machine or a piece of software um, and my students are learning that here in this class so whether it's 3D printing, uh, laser cutting, CNC milling, routing, um, we really try to tackle as much and, and work on breadth not depth and hit as many technologies as we can. Students also earn certifications and college credits which save them more than $800 in college tuition. A traffic alert. Construction continues tonight on northbound I-65 on the city's south side. Indod says they will close the left three lanes of northbound I-65 between Southport Road and I-465 starting at 9 p.m. The good news here, those three lanes will reopen tomorrow at 6 in the morning, so most of rush hour should be construction free in that area. And in five days, Indigo's red line will officially launch. Bus drivers are practicing their routes and the traffic patterns are set. And RTV6 is working for you, helping you get ready for that big change. Our Rafael Sanchez finds out how the new rapid transit line will impact everyone who goes into Marion County and the changes you need to know. Watch our half hour special inside the red line this Thursday at 7 p.m. only on RTV6. Tonight, as you see here, a tropical storm is barreling toward Puerto Rico in the Eastern Caribbean and it's forecast to become a hurricane. ABC's Maggie Ruley with Tropical Storm Dorian's potential impact. Puerto Rico's bracing for Tropical Storm Dorian. The storm is gaining strength and could become a hurricane with the island of Puerto Rico in its crosshairs. This is not a good place to be um, in the next two or three days. Across San Juan, people are out buying what they can to prepare. Just to have enough water and, and canned thing, uh, food. More than 200 firemen from Miami are heading down to the Caribbean islands to assist in case they may be needed. We're going to be there before the storm hits. We'll weather the storm where, where our base of operation will be located. This as cruise ships change itineraries and airlines are canceling flights. The memories of Hurricane Maria two years ago are still fresh on the island. The storm devastated Puerto Rico, killing nearly 3,000 people. ABC's Victor Okendo was there for Maria, and he's back again today. We were on the same street when Hurricane Maria hit, destroying everything in its path. It's been two years, and we can still feel the damage here. Just take a look right across the street at that building. Those balconies still in need of a lot of work, and now they're bracing for another storm. House after house still only shielded with a blue tarp. The island's power grid still vulnerable. People are now fearing what this next storm could bring. Dorian's expected to hit Puerto Rico Wednesday night, but experts say there is a bit of good news. Right now, this storm appears to be fast moving, and they think that it'll be out of the island just about six hours. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. And of course, we're keeping an eye on that storm here in the Storm Team 6 Weather Center as well. No impact on the Hoosier state, it doesn't look like. Uh, that, that becomes a national weather story. And just to show you again this map, the forecasted track, it looks like Florida comes into play as we get to the weekend. That's the position, kind of the mid-Atlantic coast of Florida at uh, midday on Sunday, close to hurricane strength. For us, it's about sunshine right now. Boy, nice transition. Notice the wind change yesterday and earlier today. It was out of the south. Now we've got a west-northwest wind. That will do this, drop the humidity a lot. Temperature at 81 is comfortable. Bye-bye to any thunderstorm chances. They are rolling to the east. Just take a look at your yard. 
It should be an emerald green. We've greened things up here recently with a decent amount of rain as we come to uh, the end of August, looking in pretty good shape. Next chance of rain at your house, just a 20% chance Saturday. I could put one in there on Sunday as well, uh, but let's just say the chances for rain are low as we go throughout the entire seven day forecast. And the temperatures are below the average of 84 as well. By the time we get to early next week, we might go a little above average, get temperatures back in to the mid 80s. Temperatures are coolest in southeastern portions of the state with more cloud cover and the more recent rain. You come back to the west, temperatures at 81 in Lafayette and Terre Haute. Indianapolis also in at 81 too. Miss Rosie licking her chops for a walk tonight. Mm. <laughs> She's hungry. She wants some treats. <laughs> Thanks to Lori Welty for sending in the photo. You can do the same. Send me a picture at kevin.gregory at wrtv.com, a picture of your dog, and I'll take your dog for a walk during my forecast. What a great night to do that. Uh, breezy, but dry and comfortable. Temperatures tomorrow morning, you might open the windows tonight, should be in the middle to upper 50s with that humidity falling. During the day tomorrow, you'll notice more of a breeze. The temperature recovery by noon tomorrow, 73 degrees. As we get to the afternoon hours, we'll push to 77 for the height. Lots of sunshine through the day. As I mentioned, that wind out of the northwest, anywhere from 15 to maybe some 20 miles per hour gusts through the evening hours tomorrow as we transition to more comfortable temperatures. Usually I use TrueCast to point out the timing and location for thunderstorms and rain. Tomorrow I just let it roll. Nothing more than a few clouds coming into the picture. Temperatures tomorrow afternoon full seven degrees below average for this time of year. Thursday more sunshine just a little more warmth. 80 degrees for the afternoon temperature. Friday still looks good. Should be the second Friday in a row for Friday night football that goes off without a problem. Weekend temperatures right at 81. That slight chance for showers and thunderstorms into the weekend as we go to Labor Day. Mostly sunny 83 will be to the mid 80s by Tuesday of next week. That's the warmest Very, in the forecast. Very right. nice. Well, Kevin, I have some friends that walk their cats and their bunny rabbits. So <laughs> send me a picture. Yeah. I love variety. We love our cat <laughs> friends. Right, exactly. Yeah. They have to walk too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Well, new at five here, a huge piece of pumice rock the size of Manhattan is now drifting in the Pacific toward Australia. But this is not bad news. Scientists say if the pumice makes it to the Great Barrier Reef, it could replenish some of the lost marine life there. Experts think the raft of rock is carrying organisms like crabs and corals. Now, back in 2016 and 2017, marine heat waves killed about half of the corals on the Great Barrier Reef. So this rock has a chance to replenish some of that life. The pumice rock is expected to drift to the Australian coast over the next seven to ten months. Hmm. Well, and only on our TV6 tomorrow morning, country music artists Jimmy Allen and Ashley McBride will announce nominees for the 53rd Annual CMA Awards on Good Morning America during the 8 a.m. hour. On top of that, Morgan Wallet will perform his song, If I Know Me. Carrie Underwood hosts the 53rd Annual CMA Awards with special guest hosts Reba McIntyre and Dolly Parton Wednesday, November 13th. Only on our TV6, GMA starts at 7 a.m. right after Good Morning Indiana. Do you like to snap selfies? We're not judging, but we share the new study that may make you think twice about posting those pictures to social media. Ears and counting on RTV6. Hello and a very good day to you. I'm Julie Grant with Court TV Live, and we are covering a murder trial here today on Court TV. Authorities say that Ashley MacArthur, a former crime scene investigator, allegedly killed a private eye and former police officer named Taylor Wright. Authorities also say MacArthur then tried to cover it up. They allege that her motive was money. MacArthur is now on trial for first degree murder in Pensacola, Florida, and the evidence seems to be piling up. We are in day number two right now. And here's what we know, Taylor Wright, this woman, had gone missing for 42 days before her body was found underneath concrete and soil on a farm that just so happened to belong to the defendant's family. And there are cell phone records putting MacArthur right near the scene of the crime the day that it happened. The defense is pointing to the lack of physical evidence linking their client to the crime. Witnesses for the state will be called to the stand throughout the day today, and you can count on Court TV for gavel to gavel live coverage. I'm Julie Grant, now back to you in the studio. Julie, thank you. Stream Court TV live anywhere 24-7 at CourtTV.com.
Well, many of us like to take selfies, but a warning tonight before you snap another picture. A new study finds that people who post a lot of selfies are seen as less likable. Psychologists at Washington State University conducted a study on selfies. The question, would people judge you differently based on whether you posted a selfie versus a picture someone else took of you? The researchers studied hundreds of Instagram users and found that the, the, those who posted a lot of selfies were seen as less likable. Also, they were seen as less successful successful, more insecure, and less open to new experiences. However, people who posted pictures of themselves taken by someone else were seen as having higher self-esteem, being more adventurous, less lonely, more outgoing, and more successful. And that's why I have you to take my pictures, wow, yes. Mark. I'm always <laughs> taking pictures of you, right? <laughs> no selfies for you, right? Hey, all new at 6 o'clock here on RTV6, beer and wine sales coming to IU home football games. New details released today about how the program will work. That's tonight at First on the Now Indy, the governor explains his request for schools not to be penalized by low iLearn exam scores. The reason he wants to protect those schools and teachers. You're watching RTV6.